Welcome to another product spotlight. Today we are talking about the Striker FR Generation 2 Battle Dress. So, Flame Retardant is a very, very specific chapter. First of all, you have to define what level of flame retardancy do you want to achieve. There is norms, there is standards, but at the end we have to take a close focus on what the requirement for our target population is. We don't want to have clothes for firefighters. Firefighters, due to their job that they have to do, need a very specific and a totally different level of flame retardancy in their garment systems compared to a tactical operator. Most of the time a tactical operator is confronted with IEDs with some kind of explosives which are hidden in traps, explosive traps whatsoever. So the level of flame retardancy is totally different. Here we are talking mainly about flash over situations. Something is exploding and for a limited amount of time you're exposed to heat, to the flame, uh, to the threats of, of fire. Therefore the Flame Retardant Striker FR suit, the first generation and also the second generation, are tested towards what is called the Thermoman test. And we are showing you what that means. The Thermoman test, it's a mannequin which is equipped with heat sensors. And these heat sensors measure, of course, temperature. And they are measuring the temperature that would be transferred to the human body in a certain simulated situation exposure to flames. Technically, flame retardant garments, we are simulating a flash over situation of three to four seconds. And afterwards, we are measuring what the levels of burn injuries are. That means first class, second class, third class, and how much percentage of your skin is actually burned. Of course, we are taking out the head from that testing because on the head you are wearing something totally different. Hands are not measured in, in our testing. So what we are testing is how much heat is transferred to your body during the heat exposure time. And that is what is tested in the Thermoman test. Secondly, very important, very important is what is your material concept that you are using? What is the material concept for the whole garment systems that you're using? Because of course, it's also important that you're looking also at the underwear that is worn while, while you're testing. And of course, ideally you should take underwear which is also realistically worn by the trooper in a potential situation where he is exposed to a, um, a flame threat. From our experience, even though most units have flame retardant underwear, usually they don't wear it because they hate it. It might be warm, it might be smelly, so they don't wear it. What we're doing is we are testing the garments with wool power. So mannequin is wearing wool power underwear, of course, long sleeves and long johns because of the protection that you want to have. And that wool power underwear, it's in our understanding of testing, it's not specifically flame retardant because we want to come with our testing as realistically towards what is the trooper actually exposed to. What is clear for us is that there will always be a certain amount of burn injuries, especially in such a configuration. What is really amazing is that even though the underwear is not specifically flame retardant, the values, the burn injury values are pretty low, uh, unexpectedly low. And I think that this would not be achievable in that specific configuration with classic inherent flame retardant fibers. Now, what is it that we are using? We are using for the main fabrics that you see in these garments, we are using a technology which is called Pyroshell. It is a technology which is, it's absolutely amazing because you're, in fact, you are not using flame retardant fibers. 
Nomex is a flame retardant fiber. Carmel is a flame retardant fiber. Nylon is not a flame retardant fiber. So classic flame retardant garments are using Nomex fibers. They are using Carmel fibers, Viscose FR fibers. They would never use 100% nylon because nylon is supposed to be burning. It's not in this specific pyroshell configuration because what happens here is that the nylon fabric is glued to another material and the glue, which is holding the two layers together, has graphite inside. As soon as the garment, so the bearer, is exposed to high heat stress, this graphite swells out of the structure of the fabric and builds a flame retardant shield all over the surface of the pyroshell fabric. That structure, that graphite structure, also, of course, incorporates air and air is an excellent isolator and this excellent isolator prevents the heat conduct to the skin. So this is why we experience with Schuller Pyroshell an amazingly good performance when it comes to preventing burn injuries. Enough about the technologies that we are using here for the materials. Let's go a little bit more into the details of the constructions. And please allow me that here I'm always referring to other Striker, not FR products, because we are using a lot of the functional elements that were already incorporated in, uh, into other garments. And I will hi highlight them and you will have links to these products. Let's start with the combat shirt. The combat shirt is actually based on the idea of the Striker X combat shirt. So you have fabric in these areas and knitted material in the lower areas. The upper sleeve pocket is pretty much identical with what we're having in the Striker X t-shirt. You have air packs in the shoulder areas, ventilation openings in the back area here. You have the insert pockets for the elbow pads in, in this area. The width of the sleeves is almost identical with the width of the Striker X combo shirt. Opening here again, like on Striker X. And of course you have the padding in this area, which gives you the extra wear comfort. Let's move to the pants. Pants are a hybrid between the Striker HT pants and the Striker Ultra Light pants. Let's start with the with the belt. Belt system, belt system, the whole waist system is like we were describing it already in the Striker Ultra Light. And some of you might already have experience with it. And I hope you're all liking that also. Upper pockets, just the way like Striker Ultra Light, knife pocket pocket, safety pocket in here, moving down to the side pockets. Side pockets have a multi-functional use. You have ventilation again here. You have additional zipper here to access your cargo pocket. And the cargo pocket is like you know it from the Striker Ultralight. So nothing that you have to change in your muscle memory. It's just the same configuration. Here, the ventilation openings like you have it in the Striker HT and also like we had it in our first generation of the Striker FR. Moving down to the knee section, knee section is exactly like you know it from the Striker Ultralight with a knitted fabric inside and on the lower leg we have the lower leg pocket like you know it from Striker HT or from Striker XT and the lower hem with a boot hook and an elastic for width adjustment. Moving to the back, the back has the back pockets of the Striker X combat pants and in this area here you see a different material. This is not pyro shell because with the pyro shell we would not get that much stretch like we would need for the move comfort, for the wear comfort, for the movability that we want to provide to you. So we were using here a different material. It's also from Schuller. It's an elastic material. And this is classic flame retardant fiber, which is used for this 
stretch material and see how much this is stretching. Same material we are using also for the waist system. You know what I, what I just forgot? Of course, the knee padding, the knee section, the knee protection system is like we have it on all our pants. So you can use your solid pads, you can use your 3D pads, you could also use the previous generation of our knee padding, the, the Sustec uh, and the Flex pads. So they go all into the knee section here, like they do in the Striker Ultralight, like they do in the Striker X. So absolutely the same thing, nothing new, nothing where you have to rethink and uh, get uh, accustomed to. And of course, already this section is nicely padded. So everything that you know from our first Striker combat pads. And of course, for the elbow protection, you can insert the elbow pads like you know them. So let's wrap that up. First, the materials. We're using quite a lot of materials here. Uh, the main material is called Pyroshell. It's a new, pretty new technology of flame retardant uh, textiles. We're using it for the sleeves, the collar and the, the shoulder areas of the combat shirt and the main body of the, of the pants. Secondly, for the pants in the back side where we need the stretch, where we need extreme stretch, we are using another shuller material, which is more classic inherent flame retardant fiber. Uh, the torso material of the combat shirt in comparison to the first generation is a lighter material, which uh, provides, of course, more wear comfort. The pelvic areas of the combat shirt are also padded, like we have it in our Striker X combat shirt, in order to provide more wear comfort and good padding in this sensitive pelvic area. So this is the Striker FR Generation 2 battle dress. Join us next time for another product spotlight.